King Shumiwami and the Volcano of Mad by Kim Yegid Episode 2 Russ collected his bright blue comforter that had been balled up in a corner of the couch and wrapped it around himself, stomping loudly as he marched upstairs to his room. He remained wrapped in this fashion as he lay down on his bed and stared at the bright white ceiling. The ceiling was just about the only white thing in his room. The walls were painted a shiny red that made you want to touch them. The windows were covered with sheets, but not just ordinary sheets. These sheets were decorated with superhero cartoons. Words like BOP, BANG, and WHAM were printed on them in all capital letters. Sometimes, as Russ stared up at the comic strip-covered sheets that his mom draped across the window as curtains, Russ thought to himself, I wish I had a superhero to rescue me from this place. Russ's room also had a small mirror hanging on the wall. Russ's mom had made it out of building blocks. It was a square with the letters A, B, C across the top, and the numbers 1, 2, 3 along the bottom, all in primary colors. Russ hated that mirror. The best part of Russ's room was Dodie, his pet parakeet. People think parakeets are dumb. Well, maybe they don't think parakeets are dumb, but that they're not as smart as other birds, like parrots. Dodie was a smart parakeet, though, and represented all parakeets well. While Russ stared at the ceiling, his anger growing, Dodie began chirping happily. The more Dodie would chirp and sing, the harder it was for Russ to stay angry. Isn't it funny to be sent to your room? Parents are always sending kids to their rooms like it's punishment. But what's wrong with being in your room? Your room is your own castle, isn't it? You get to decide what does and doesn't happen in your room, not like the rest of the world. Russ was lying in his bed, enjoying this thought, when his mother barged in. Dude, don't you know how to knock? Russ snapped at his mother. She stopped in her tracks, her face twisting into an odd shape. It was a shape like you might see on a Halloween mask. Don't you dude me, his mother snapped back. I don't know who you think you're talking to. Maybe Russ knew he shouldn't talk to her like that, but he felt like he was always getting blamed for things that weren't his fault. Russ's ears grew red as he prepared for his mother's response, which he was sure would include a lot of pointing and yelling. Her body tilted back as her right arm pointed up towards the ceiling. Her mouth opened wide enough for Russ to fall into it, but instead of a yell, something else came out. Achoo! His mother sneezed. Achoo! She sneezed again. It was almost as though the red were draining out of Russ's ears right into his mother's face as she sneezed again and again and again. Achoo! 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 Ah! It was a good thing Russ was still wrapped in his blanket. He was able to lift a corner and use it as a protective shield. The sneezes continued coming one after the other. Achoo! 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 Like there would be no end to them. Russ's mother seemed to want to say something. Achoo! But each word was interrupted. Achoo! It created an odd sort of punctuation. Achoo! So that the final result was something like clean Achoo! your Achoo! room. She finished with one final extra special. Achoo! Normally, Russ would have been annoyed about having to clean his room. As far as he was concerned, cleaning your room just meant arranging everything in a way that someone else likes better. There was no time for that, though. Right now, he was just hoping his mother would survive. She took a few steps towards the door, grabbing the doorknob. Was she going to fall down? If his mother sneezed herself to death in his room, would he be arrested? She turned to him, gasping for air, then said, And get out of that ridiculous blanket! Who do you think you are, King Shumiwami? Russ's mom slammed the bedroom door closed behind her. King who? Russ wondered aloud. Who cares what she thinks? Russ told himself. I hate her! 
He glared at the rise and shine frame hanging across from him, then tore it from the wall and threw it at the door after her. I hate you! The mirror slammed into the door, slid down, then tumbled across the floor. A crack ran through the corner where the C met the primary blue square next to it. But Russ was still too busy working on his tantrum to be concerned about the mirror's well-being. It's not fair! It's not fair! It's not fair! Russ punched the pillow on his bed out of frustration. It's not fair! He punched so hard the feathers in the pillow started to fill the air. It's not fair! It's not fair! It's not fair! That's it, came a voice from behind him. Hit it again. Harder, harder. Russ wasn't done beating up the pillow, but you have to admit, a mysterious voice from behind you might make you stop punching a pillow, too. Feathers and other pillow stuffing drifted through the air like snowflakes as Russ turned around in search of the voice's owner. He turned around and around like a dog chasing his tail, but as far as Russ could tell, he was all alone. Don't stop because of me, the voice said. I find it's helpful to punch a pillow when I'm mad, too. Really? Russ said aloud. Really? The voice answered. It was a relief to know he wasn't alone in his pillow punching, but Russ was still a little confused. Where could the voice be coming from? He scratched his head. Scratching, of course, is a sign that someone's thinking, often rather deeply. I guess it's a sign of other things, too, but it may be inappropriate to discuss those things here. Hmm. Russ was definitely deep in thought. The voice had to be here somewhere. He opened the closet. Games and tools and other supplies came tumbling out, but nothing that belonged to a voice. He opened the drawers, sorting through shirts and socks and other clothing, but found nothing with a voice. He checked under the bed. He even stuck his head in Dodie the parakeet's cage, but he still couldn't find the owner of the voice. Russ scratched his chin. Where could the voice be coming from? He wondered out loud this time. Here, the voice said. Russ spun around again really, really quickly this time, looking for whoever might be talking. By now he was getting sort of dizzy. Where? Russ asked. Right here, came the answer. Russ looked down at the floor and saw the rise and shine frame lying there. He also saw the crack in the corner where the C met the primary blue square next to it. Russ thought to say a four-letter word he knew he wasn't supposed to say, but he figured he was in enough trouble already. Instead, he whispered to himself, Man! Russ gently lifted the rise and shine mirror as though it were a wounded bird. When he accidentally glanced into the mirror, he couldn't believe his eyes. Do you know what a reflection is? A reflection is what you see when you look into a mirror. Sometimes you might also see a reflection when you look into a window at a certain angle or the paint of a really shiny car. Usually, when you look into a mirror, you see yourself looking back at you. When Russ looked into the mirror, staring back at him, where his reflection should have been, was a king.